three, two, one. This project is over a year old. I was supposed to release it January 2017, and it was supposed to be um, a collage of all my first year highlights of doing poetry and spoken word. And it was supposed to explain why and how I got into poetry in the first place, but I was too shook to tell my story. But now what I've realised is it can help and encourage and maybe bless someone. So as I share it with you guys, please take it in, take me in, and I just pray that it blesses at least one person. Thank you. Oh my gosh. It's Daniel Wright. Daniel. So what really happened was um I realised I'd been living in depression for a long time now, which was most of my teenage years. As a child, you're not really informed or educated on mental health. Some of the stuff um, I'd been used to or that I thought was normal turns out weren't. For example, um, just thinking the whole world's against you, um, just being angry at everyone, the mood swings, just all of that I thought was normal then it started to get worse and worse over the years then came March February 2016 yeah around that period that's when it all got worse it was like my sanity now was being questioned and I just didn't know that something like this could happen to me just because I'm a bubbly person so and I'm not really one to be described as soft or emotional but I didn't realise I was using that to paint over some cracks I didn't even know I had. Mummy moved me out of the hood when I was a youth. And now I don't blame her. But everywhere I go with typical stereotypes of black guys wearing hoods, just let them hang over their heads. is deemed the same as black guys hanging on to the hoods in their heart even until their last breath. So at the time, March, March is my mum's birthday, so um, I remember that's the time of celebration and I remember I was just trying so hard to wear a mask and to put on a brave face to make sure no one knew that I was broken. But it was, it was crazy, man, because I had so many things that were pressuring me and that were just acting like a weight on my back. I remember it feeling like a cold walk because my flesh was just literally frozen as it stood there and watched like a bystander of a battle between my heart and my mind. But hey, some of us have turned into red-handed mechanical beasts just to slaughter one another for approval. But reality is we know there's still no monster. We see the system failure. Somewhere we know there is an error because we don't see our hearts when we get intimate with the mirror. But I guess maybe it just needs a dumpster. It started with the overload of thoughts about some girls in the past. A-level exams, I had 10 approaching at me real fast at this period and I didn't know how to brace myself. Being successful, financially stable, pursuing my aspirations, I was so obsessed with that. Um, I was also a Christian union leader in my college, so the pressure of some people looking up to me or living by example in Christ was a lot and I didn't know that first time at the time. Um, you know, you kind of feel like people are watching your every move and they may put you on a pedestal or make you an example of what not to do or how not to be like. Um, you feel like they're dis dissecting you. Well, that's how I felt at least, whether it was true or not. Um, being a family man, um, relationship with my dad, with my family, with my friends. Um, and just trying to get closer to God because I felt like I was a fraud due to some sins that I was struggling to repent from. And all of that weighed me down. Because personally, I don't like focusing on this topic. But when are they going to stop it? Because when I jump on Twitter, I see our brothers and sisters' pics and vids that are now looks like a shopping list. And I can only see so much blood dripping from the bottom of the baskets that the feds have made with their bullets that our bodies now lay in caskets. I promise you. Yeah, it was so bad, man, because I didn't know whether I'd survive the night and make it into the next morning. And when I found that I did, I just couldn't celebrate because another night was coming, so yeah. I would feel so angry at the world and hold on to grudges or start tension with people, especially family and friends, like, and I would do all of this in my head just for no reason or because there was underlying anger. And at times I would just feel like it was the whole world against me, like it was only me and God on the same side and everyone else was just an op. So I felt like I was drowning in this big ocean 
and no one was there to help me. And I was tweeting across these periods and I would delete them straight away because I was using that as an outlet. They weren't anything suicidal or anything like that. They were just tweets focusing on my ambitions. Like I said, I became so obsessed with it. And I felt like if I weren't doing the six out of seven things that I put on the list to be productive, to work towards my goals, then I'd be so hard on myself. I literally almost lost my mind. It was so scary um, because I couldn't tell anyone because I thought people would, wouldn't understand or they would undermine the situation or tell me to man up as if to say, that expressing myself vocally would make me less of a man. You can't be offensive uh, like yourself. I don't know, man. You can't be blunt like yourself. We've got to be on point together, or we'll be stationary. Mm -hmm. So raise that mindset and set your heart for the true ruler so he can straighten your ways. We are lost without our country. And we keep going round, act like we are a compass. Whereas we are on his campus in his kingdom, and we are his equal. So submit your equations and your situations to the Lord, he wants to be involved. And cross out every miscalculation of the problems you try to solve. Let him take away your troubles, some added to your struggles. Instead of dividing ourselves into categories by melanin or N. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's why I felt like I was drowning in this big ocean with no one to help me. Like, you're telling me it's not that deep. Well, for me personally, I can't even swim, so I'm still drowning, kind of thing. So a point I would love to make is, guys, whether it's encouraging our generation to express yourself vocally through what you're going through. Guys, as in males and females actually, please learn that what's good for your health is good for your health. So just do what you've got to do, express yourself how you feel is best and just do you in it. Today was amazing. This station is Dollis Hill. I don't even know what this is. Like, but today was amazing. This train terminates. Just touch down. Yeah, I'm tired. I remember one time I was in the library trying to revise for my exams and. Nothing was sinking in, so I started staring at myself, my reflection in the window, and this was from about half hour up until an hour, and I just couldn't recognise myself, it's like I didn't know who I was anymore, so I just packed my bag and I left the library, I just kicked, and I wasn't just going to walk away, I, I, was, I almost started running out of nowhere, like I just had enough. I just felt so captive, I felt like Satan himself was after my mind, so running away was preventing him from getting that, if that makes sense. But I really thank God for the life of one of my bros, because um, I managed to call him and he picked up and I told him what had happened in the library and he said he realised that something was up because he had noticed the tweets that I'd been tweeting on Twitter and he knew that wasn't in my nature to do so. Um, so the fact that he noticed took so much weight off my back because it allowed me to open up to him about everything and that was just therapeutic. It really did feel like a blessing. Um, think of it like a fizzy drink. If you've got all the acid bottled up inside of you and it's full and you're being shaken around and tossed around by the pressures of life, once you fully open up, you're going to explode and it's going to be messy, it's going to fizz everywhere and you don't want that for yourself. So learn to trust those around you, learn how to open up also to those who, um, yeah, to friends, learn how to check on your friends properly. Um, I know we know how to banter without being taught, but check to see if your friend is okay mentally, not just physically as well. Even when they tell you I'm fine, just know your friend inside and out, know them like the back of your hand. The turnaround came from my prayers though, um, before I was trying too hard to feel something I guess or to make my prayers make sense. 
um, and they were rhyming and I was just patting myself telling myself to fix up like this wasn't the time to be messing around I thought I was messing around um, but no I remember this day I got home I was quoting bible scriptures it was like no weapon fashion or form that gets me shall prosper the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear and all these things and I started telling God my heart and my mind and they were rhyming again so this time I decided to put um, my thoughts down on paper my prayers down on paper and that's how poetry started it, it was an outlet for me it gave me peace and therapy okay so obviously we're out here in it uh, university of Essex yeah. listen anyone who doesn't like his poetry yeah, has to answer to me has to answer to me we can fight we can scrap literally out here I'm an advocate of believing God doesn't answer your prayers, but he answers your faith behind your prayers. So that's just something to think about. When I say Jesus, you say Christ. Jesus. Christ. Jesus. Christ. When I say Jesus, you say Christ. Jesus. Christ. Jesus. Christ. When I say Jesus, you say Christ. Jesus. Christ. Jesus. Christ. Amen. Okay. I'm gonna say, Jesus, please don't leave us. Is that okay for you guys? Do you catch it yet? Yeah. Okay. Jesus, please don't leave us. Do you like that? Okay. Jesus, please don't leave us. Yes, I hope you're getting it. You like it? I won't lie to you though and tell you that I've never been depressed since then. Um, it's just about learning that I had dominion and the power and authority over certain influences that played a factor in my mental health. For example, music. My song choices that I was listening to, um, I was listening to sad, slow, depressing music a lot of the time, so that's how I'd feel. You've got to understand that what you expose your soul to actually has an influence on you. Also, I was trying to do, I was trying to focus so much on the future that I weren't even li living in the present with that rule. And then also for Christians, we know that if we try and play God's role, <laughs> it won't work out. Like, And that's something I realised. Understand that you have power, dominion and authority over every circumstance and over influences that have an effect on your health. You've just got to be willing to know that you've just got to take that responsibility and you've got to walk in Christ. He's the way, the truth and the life and walk in him. And I promise you there's a way out. And I can happily say since like last year, summer, 2017 summer, I, I haven't really experienced depression and that's just to the glory of God. He's helped me so much, so I know he can help you. Um, but yeah, this is my autobiography part one. Don't sleep on me. But also don't sleep on God. God is real and Jesus Christ is alive.